Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down in Oxford County catching up with Ken Curra, agronomist from BASF. Ken, how's it going? It's going great. We've got a beautiful sunny day. The crops are growing. Yep, and we've got a little bit of an uneven corn crop here. Mm. And I think, I think that's the story of the year here. Um, yeah, depending on where you are, you're seeing a lot of different things. Yeah, exactly. You know, we've endured this seven or eight week dry weather pattern. We've had enough rain to kind of sneak us through, but unfortunately not enough to eliminate that emergence variability that we're seeing in a lot of fields. So yeah, uh, variability and uh, variability and that uneven crop in the corn is going to be a big discussion point on this fungicide decision in the next three weeks. You got it. And I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about fungicides here today, but first, Let's talk about, I guess, the disease pressure and what we're looking for. There's probably three or four that are on your radar. Yeah, really in corn, I have three primary diseases I'm looking for. There's, there's the gibberella ear rot, fusarium ear rots, right? So the dawn and vomitoxin potential that's there. You know, that, that's an old story, but nonetheless, it's on our radar, right? Because it is a, it's an expensive story if left a, a, a unchecked. Uh, but from a foliar disease standpoint, the primaries I'm looking at are tar spot and northern corn leaf blight. Growers and agronomists are familiar with northern corn leaf blight. Tar spot, relatively new, reared its head here in 2021. 2022 kind of calmed off because we didn't have the environment to really blow it up again. And, you know, here we are on the cusp of when tar spot will likely be discovered in the province here in the next 10 days, let's say. And how is it going to spread? Is this seven or eight week weather pattern going to turn to something else? Now, let's talk about tar spot for a moment. Mm -hmm. Typically, you know, that, that wet leaves, that those wet conditions mm -hmm. conducive to bringing that in. We're not seeing that yet, but you never know. Yeah, 2021 really proved that, you know, we had those constant extended overnight leaf wetness periods well into the middle of the day. And, you know, we can talk about that for tar spot and for dawn for that matter. Mm -hmm. You know, tar spot, the market was primed up to, uh, you know, let's be ready to manage this for 2022. And we just didn't have those consecutive nights and days where we were over eight hours of that overnight leaf wetness period where it extended into midday. We just didn't have that steamroll effect where we had that disease environment persist for multiple days on end like we saw in 2021. Hey, so let's talk about this field here. And because it's pretty typical. Uh, yeah. We've got anything from three to 10 leaf corn in this area. Yeah. Um, how does that variability play into the fung fungicide decision? And we, not just in the area, we have some fields of three and 10 leaf corn in the field, mm -hmm. right? With, with delayed emergence on some clay soils. So that really does factor into the decision. Uh, first and foremost, I think the, over, the overarching statement I would make is the first crop is usually the best crop to manage. Right. Uh, generally speaking, regardless of most crops out there, the first crop is the best crop to manage. So I'm looking at, you know, those first emergers, what percentage of the field does that cover? If, you know, if we're looking at a, you know, like a 90, 10 or a 70, 30 split somewhere in that range, really going to have to work through with your agronomist on, you know, how does this fungicide decision play into effect? There's a lot of different factors there. Whether you're looking at dawn and ear rots, what's my tolerance risk, right? Do I have my own large elevator where I can blend off a farm or two that I'm going to have emergence issues and it's going to be tough to hit the fungicide right? Am I relying on a custom operator and I'm usually late in the cycle? Then your tolerance for tar spot, because it's hard on the standability of corn, is that much less versus I have my own machine and I can go get it on October 25th if I want to. There's a lot of different factors that growers and agronomists are going to have to work through to really pin down the fungicide decision for those highly variable fields. Yeah, and one of the keys is obviously assessing that potential. I mean, mm. and that is determined, as you know, between that fifth leaf and that 12 leaf. And after that, we know what we have. Yep. And we've got to make a decision about, you know, how we're going to manage that crop. And that brings us right back to 2021. Ontario record corn crop, mm. right? And by a long shot too. Yep. A lot of growers pulled off the best crop of their lives. And that was widespread. Uh, you know, Niagara clays, heavier ground. You know, some areas have just pulled phenomenal yields, not what they're used to at all. And if we go back to Fred Below's Seven Wonders, the two he really highlights are nitrogen and environment, which is rainfall, right? Weather, rainfall, you know. And I said this, and we filmed these videos two years ago this time, Burn, is we come off a of dry June. The crop was well-rooted. We had uniform corn everywhere because... Basically, the ground had stayed mellow. All soils had stayed mellow. We can't say that this year about some of the heavier ground, yeah. poor drainage, compaction from harvest to 2021, etc. But, you know, we have a foundation for yield in those really good-looking fields that I think rivals 2021 because we've been through this weather pattern where that applied fertility hasn't been lost to the environment. 
And for those fields that hung in and have nice uniformity, they're driving roots deep. So they are really set up for, I think, a pretty phenomenal yield. Yeah, the variable stands, we got some more thinking to do on those. We're going to have to work through that decision a little bit more. Hey, Ken, I want to talk a little bit more about the weather. I mean, it's mm -hmm. been really dry. We've had a persistent drought here at, 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 at different parts of it. Yeah. What happens if, uh, if that weather stays dry for, for a lot of growers? How does that factor into their, their management? Yeah, so my, my experience, um, you know, in my days now, you know, working with fungicide products or even prior when I was a seed company agronomist mm -hmm. and dealing with farmers who were trying to make that decision on, you know, drought stress corn, drought prone soils. And if this drought persists, you know, what, what's my potential for ROI? Uh, a couple different factors there. First and foremost, don't lose sight of yield potential. Mm -hmm. If you're in the sand plain or on gravel bottom ground, but you've got, you know, even crop that looks like this, right? Like that's got nice color to it. It's got its legs underneath it. It's well fed. That fertility is about to jump into the plant here during its fast growth stage. You know, we're standing right now, basically an eight or nine leaf yeah. collar corn. It's determined its kernel round, and right now it's developing its kernel length. So the kernel slots are being set, and I always try to gri uh, drive growers and agronomists back to the yield potential is set well before tassel, mm -hmm. and it's about keeping those kernel slots alive with that plant health aspect. Secondary factor, and of course a lot of our sand plain in Ontario has proximity to Lake Erie, it's the tar spot mm -hmm. area. So the standability discussion has right. to come in that as well with, with uh, disease pressure, but the primary message don't lose sight of the yield potential that's being set right here, right now. Let's uh, wrap this up with some fundamentals. Yep. I mean, obviously we've got some timing, silking, we've got to make some decisions. Run us through uh, that timing and, and that strategy. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start with Dawn, right? The, the year bolts. First and foremost, wet silks. I usually tell, uh, you know, applicators, if you see three quarters of an inch of green silks available on three quarters of the plant, mm -hmm. it's time to get ready to go. By the time you get there, she'll be ready to go, right? Uh, green silk window, obviously driven by heat and environment at the time. That could be a seven-day window in your area. It could be 10 days. It could be five if we get into a really intense heat wave. But that green silk window for dawn is, is pivotal. And when you do that, you're also going to hit the ideal timing for northern corn leaf blight because it's a blown-in product. We're familiar with managing that for you know, 10, 12 years now. So that all kind of fits together. And we've also learned on the tar spot side that that VTR1 timing mm -hmm. from an ROI standpoint is best, right? Okay. Is to hit it right there at that, at that tassel silking timing. So regardless of what product you're using, you know, we have all in one jug products, all in one case. We have uh, fungicide mixtures that are in the marketplace. Now there's lots of choices for growers. At the end of the day, you know, those products applied at the right time for the disease and in particular Dawn or Key. And that's really the economic best timing for the two key foliars in Tar Spot and Northern as well. Great stuff. Ken, um, always um, a treat to have you on the Corn School. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the invitation. Awesome. Thanks, Bern.